you have been living in hardship before, today that hardship will stop. Yeah. Powers that are oppressing you, my Jesus will oppress them. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Just give him a wave of friend. Wave your hands to thank him. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for the gift of life he has given to you. Let me see you wave your holy hands to thank him. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we give you praise. Righteous Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you richly. I will turn your Bible to the book of Job. Job 20, verse 15. I want you to read it quietly. If you are seeing it, just read it quietly. I want you to turn your Bibles again to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 19. I want us to take it together. One, two, go. Again. You are not reading it well. I want you to read it very well. Money answers all. This is the Bible. So if you meet anyone in the church or in any ministry and is telling you money is not good, that person has a problem. Money answers all things. There is no other part of the Bible that they said this thing answers all things. No. It's only money that answers all things. Our children are in prostitution because of money. Our children are into stealing because of money. Some, they don't like what they do. Well, because of money, they forced to do it. Some are driven from school right now because of money. So money is very key. The place of money in the Bible is very important. And that is what I just read for you. Money answers all things. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Psalms, Psalm 57. Uh, I want you to read it down the whole of Psalm 57. It's not a very long one. Uh, Psalm 57, but I'm going to read verse 8. Psalm 57, verse 8. Verse 8, not 1. You, you take it from 1 to the end. Uh, uh, when you get home, I want you to read it. Uh, in this part of the Psalm 57, David realized he was living in the cave. David was already anointed a king and he was living in the cave cave a king but he was living in the cave because of king Saul and a lot of enemies that are trying to kill him so David ran away 
and he started living in the hole in the cave meanwhile he had been anointed a king one day in this verse 8 David got to realize that he's a king I shouldn't be living in a cave I shouldn't be living my life like this my, I'm supposed to be bigger than this now I cannot be living in a room I, I can't be begging I don't supposed to be begging I don't supposed to be living anywhere today I'm in this brother's house tomorrow I'm in this brother's house next tomorrow as I'm coming here they will say no 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 my wife is around please go to the next place I don't need you today another day you can come so David was like a destitute no place for him no good place and David so close to God realized that his problem is not that the people does not want him the whole of Israel they want him but it's not becoming a spiritual problem so David had to on realizing that this thing is not ordinary he had to write this psalm can I have that verse 8 and David said I wake up my glory I wake sultry and hap I myself will wake I wake early I wake up my glory I wake Sultry and hard enjoyment. Wake up. I've been living in the cave. My glory should wake up. I want to enjoy now. I should be in the palace enjoying. What life am I living? This is not the life I ought to have been living. Something is wrong. My glory, wake up. My glory, wake up. David now realized that this is not the life he ought to be living when he realized he started praying against the forces that were stopping him and that is how David broke through Saul died, David came to the palace he became the king not until you realize that the life I'm living is not my real life this is uh, oppression this, this is not how I'm supposed to live my life I'm a king I'm a queen. I shouldn't be living in a cave, in a hole. There are a lot of you that are just exactly like David. There's something about this church I like. We have more young people in this church than elderly people, and I love it. I love what God gave to me. You know why? Because the young people are more difficult to go to church. They don't go to churches. True or false? They don't go to church. A, a, an elderly man called me up. We, are, we went to same uh, school, college. So he said, my son is coming to your church. And I didn't believe it. So I went to where the church was. I took early then. And I went to spy in the evening if he's really in the church. I was not spying. He's really seated. He was listening attentively. My son, my stubborn son. So he could go to church. You are a true man of God. I smiled. And he's drinking, no? He was so happy. He said, How did you do it? My son, I does not want to hear church. So he could go to church. It means we are building up the future generation. It means the church has a place in the future. It means what we do here is unique and is for the next generation. It means this church is a modern church. It's not one of those ancient of days church. So what I'm teaching you is from God. There are a lot of you, the life you are living now is not your life. Not until you wake up and realize and stand against it, 
you will still remain in the same position. Like David. You will still remain in the same position till you wake up. David realized and woke up. He said, awake my glory. Sultry and harp. Harp is music. Enjoyment. My glory should wake up. I cannot be in the bush. And I'm, I'm a king. I cannot walk like that. I'm running out of time. I cannot continue like this. Something has to happen. God, do something now. Awake my glory. Let my glory wake up. You know what they call glory? Glory is your shining, your enjoyment. That is your glory. I want you to talk to yourself. Say, God, awake my glory. There are some of you demons are talking to you. Which glory? You don't have any glory. They used to talk to me like that too. Before I outgrew them. So devils will naturally want to stop you, right? You put them aside. Devils will use every foolish thing to stop you. Eh? They will use every foolish thing. They, you know what they call devil? If you will get your testimony in this church, devil must use every means to stop you from coming here. They can even use somebody to say what is not true just to stop you from coming here. Because your testimony is here. Be smart. Say it again to yourself. God, awake my glory. Say it like you mean it. Thank you. He said in that book of Job, Joel 25, verse 5. He said, And the year which the Kankan one, Pama one, Caterpillar has eaten, I will do what? That he will restore. So you are still going to say it. Now you are the one that will do it. Say, I command my glory to wake up. My glory, wake up. Somebody is saying, is it possible? Yes. It's very, very possible. You might be trekking to church. You might be hopeless. You are the next to be the car owner. That is how God works. God does not want to know how. God is your how. You might not even have hope of beauty. See, I've been running this church for nine years. Nine years, not be joke. I've seen a lot in this church. And we didn't just start this church last year. We have been doing this church in Ugeli for eight years before we moved to this Wari Express Road. I know what I'm saying. I prayed for a lot of persons. I prayed for persons before they gave them house, houses. Take these keys. That house, so, so please, I give you. Take, take. They are still living in the house today. I've prayed for people that are nobody. They came to the church with bathroom slippers. Today, their cars are outside. Sweet, sweet cars. La Lords. So when I tell... See, I'm not the one that is going to make you rich. I'm telling you that you came with the riches. But there is a prince of Persia that has been blocking it. All my God wants to do for you is to remove the devil and you are rich. Simple. Simple. Don't, don't be deceived. Don't let anybody tell you if you just do this thing, do this thing, the money will just be coming. You will not be rich. Let me take you somewhere. Yeah. So your head not get all year before. Your head not get all year before. You have to do something to be rich. You came with money. Plenty money. Tell somebody, I came with plenty money. I came with riches. I came with children. I came with all the enjoyment. I came to enjoy. I came to succeed. I came to live a big life. I must enjoy. 
Your neighbor is sleeping. Push him, push him. You must enjoy, you must enjoy. Push that person. Poverty is a mindset. Poverty is a mindset. If you have a friend and he's always planning small, avoid that person. When I was much younger, I always planned big. If you see where they plan, you will feel. If I plan, yeah, and I never eat for three days. I don't get shoe, but if I they plan, people will say, this guy go keep people. How you they plan like this? So if you have a friend that is planning to buy keke and Okada, is always planning how to buy two keke, how to leave keke avenue to glory. I'm not saying it's bad to buy keke, it's level by level. But if he's always planning on it, leave that person. It's, not, it's too small to be your friend. It's too small. to be. It's going to pull you down. It will pollute you. Say, my glory must wake up. My, must wake up. my enjoyment must wake up. You see people enjoying, you'll be wondering, ah, I'll be woman still born them. Somebody will not tell you, you know, if I had get money before. <laughs> now you now saw your friend that was very poor, even poorer than you when you were growing up. Now he's driving a big jeep. Who can be if I had a still make and rich? You never see that kind of thing before. You go to wonder, sir, not be Thomas be this. Thomas, why they feed that time with this school? Now drive this kind of jeep. His voice come big. How are you? Reject poverty. <laughs> ah. Poverty is of the devil. If somebody is telling you, you know, all those people you see that are rich, you don't know what they do. They do a lot of things. They join many, many things. And they join. Go and meet a rich man. He did not join anything. Not join anything. Must you join? So you have to join something to be rich. It's a grace. Huh? It's a grace. So you know what they call riches? Huh? It's a spirit. Once it connects you and your glory wakes up, just one plus one, you are the next billionaire. One plus one. Eh? Very simple. Simple. Oh. My pain is for you to succeed. My pain is for things to start working for you. That is my pain. I don't want to belong to all these funny, funny men of God that are always... Well, who raised him up? Is he a member of Shuzi? Is he a member of Redeem? Is he a member as if there are churches in heaven? There are no churches in heaven, no. Denomination is not in heaven. We will all meet in heaven as one church. Don't let anybody deceive you. God has given me a ministry of wealth. You cannot come to this church and your life will remain the same. God has given me a ministry, a healing ministry. My God is a mighty healer. It's what God has given to me. Today, this same God must awake your glory. If you have been living in hardship before, today that hardship will stop. Powers that are oppressing you, my Jesus will oppress them. In the name of Jesus. I see it. I feel it. Testimonies are everywhere. 